Singapore and the United States have signed an agreement to deepen nuclear energy cooperation. Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken signed the 30-year deal known as the 123 Agreement. It will cover how the two countries can explore new nuclear technologies safely and securely. Now, this is just one of several deals inked during Mr. Blinken's visit to Singapore. Other agreements signed at the Foreign Affairs Ministry include the renewal of the Singapore-U.S. Third Country Training Program, which trains regional officials in areas like public health and trade facilitation to smart cities. The two countries also reaffirmed efforts to deepen technical exchange in areas like digital economy, AI and cybersecurity. We've concluded bilateral digital economy cooperation roadmap, which will be the foundation for further collaboration on the digital economy. We're also expanding industry and research collaboration in quantum and in artificial intelligence. Our institutions have expanded the mapping of our respective AI governance frameworks to include new fields such as generative AI. There's a shared recognition on the part of the United States and Singapore that in so many ways, uh, together we're present at the creation, present at the creation of new technologies that are profoundly already and even more profoundly in the future, shaping the way uh, we live, uh, the way we work, uh, the way our economies function. And it's imperative, indeed incumbent, upon us uh, to do what's necessary to shape the way those technologies are used, to maximize their potential for good and progress. The nuclear cooperation deal between Singapore and the U.S. aims to deepen their collaboration and understanding of advanced nuclear technologies like small modular reactors. Now, both countries say the 30-year so-called 123 agreement would enable peaceful nuclear cooperation consistent with the highest global safety and security standards. The deal would give Singapore access to details on U.S. nuclear energy technologies that are under export control. It would also allow it to look at how advanced nuclear tech may help balance the island state's climate goals with its energy needs. We have committed to a decarbonisation journey, a process that will um, end by 2050 in resulting in net zero emissions. So we will do everything that's possible to ensure that we achieve those targets. But at the same time, we need to always ensure our own energy security and also at the same time to make it cost effective for all of our fellow citizens. The U.S. Congress must review the deal before it comes into force. That's expected by the year end. But Singapore stresses that this agreement doesn't mean it has decided to pursue nuclear energy. It says that would de require detailed studies on factors like its safety, reliability, affordability and sustainability in the local context. To that end, I've uh, also said before in the past that all options are on the table. And obviously, nuclear energy, clean nu nuclear energy is one uh, possible option. But let me be clear, we have not decided on whether we're going to eventually use nuclear energy or not. The agreement is a prerequisite for Singapore to collaborate with other countries that use nuclear energy technologies and designs containing components or intellectual property of U.S. origin. Now, in the region, Indonesia, Vietnam and the Philippines have already signed the agreement. Singapore and the U.S. also discussed ways to work more closely together in critical and emerging technologies. The second such bilateral dialogue ranged from aligning standards on the development of generative AI to enhancing cooperation on semiconductors. Nicholas Ng sat down with Digital Development and Information Minister Joseph Ntio for more. Some of today's announcements involve standardizing AI governance with the U.S., what is Singapore's role in driving global conversations in AI? And how will we see Singapore's role in these conversations evolve? Standard setting, while still very early stage, is one of the ways in which we can deepen this conversation so that everyone can be on the same page as to what are the risks that are most present and how should we go about managing these risks. 
That's what we are hoping to overcome through international engagement and a building of a consensus over time of what good standards would look like for AI safety. Mrs. Teo says one way to enhance AI safety is to work with countries that are conducting such research. Apart from the US, Singapore is also exploring such partnerships with the European Union. Different countries will have different interpretations. Different scientific and research communities that are studying this matter will also have their own take. How to find convergence and how to bring about a shared understanding of the most severe safety risks that needs to be addressed with the highest priority, that is itself a very important conversation to be had. The next bilateral dialogue will be held in the US next year. ASEAN member states will also get support from the US and Singapore to develop AI through training programs. Now, the two countries renewed a deal today to share technical expertise with third party nations. Singapore's Digital Development and Information Minister says many other small countries are keen to take part in such training programs. We have always understood what it's like for a small country to deal with uh, technological changes that uh, our citizens are inevitably affected by. Uh, we are on the receiving end of products and services that are not necessarily developed according to our requirements. We have to respond to that. Uh, we are on the receiving end also of opportunities, of innovations that may not have been invented within our own jurisdiction. We want to benefit from that.